in three, two, one. Woo! You thought I was gonna be finished with this project? Not even close. Here we are inside my lovely garage and it looks absolutely no different than it did before I started spending a bunch of money on plans and trying to turn this thing into an apartment. So a lot of stuff has happened and I've paid some money because I had to get plans and whatnot and submit those to the city and right now that's where we are. Stuff is submitted with the city and I have to wait a couple of months before I am allowed to even just buy materials and then start building this thing. So in today's video I'm going to go over those plans, how they look, a lot of the decisions that had to be made and kind of where we are right now. If that sounds interesting, definitely smash that thumbs up, make it blue. I would appreciate it for that YouTube algorithm. Real quick, just gotta grab my computer and then I'll be there. All right, there we go. I do have my schmack book and I will say by far the most fun part of this project so far is that I get to work with my best friend, Andy, who I work out with just about every morning because he's the project manager for the project, also known as a general contractor, whatever you wanna call it. And my least favorite part of this project is that money is coming out of my pocket faster than this. And that's a lot of money. Why are we still here? Unfortunately, I have to pick all that up. All right, now that I picked up at least one third of those fake bills, let's hop into the computer. So these are the plans. These took a while to get because a lot of back and forth happened. And these are the final plans, which also have electrical drawings. So basically what happened is I had to give my ideas to Andy, my friend, who was the project manager. He was working with the designer as well as with an engineer to make sure that we can kind of do all of this stuff. Mia also had a large hand in it because throughout all of my projects that I've ever done, from that first duplex to Airbnb and all that, Mia has been extremely helpful with all the renovation, design, all that good stuff. So she has a lot of input and it's fantastic input because I do not have an eye for this stuff. A few months back, Mia found a pretty cool ADU that was built out in Denver. I believe it's called Alley House Denver if you wanna check it out on Instagram. So we took some inspiration from that, from the interior layout, uh, but the exterior layout, we wanted to do the single slanted roof like that. So it kind of looked like half the house, uh, way it's positioned. My house is long, skinny in the front. There's a driveway and then there's the uh, garage. So we kind of wanted to make it look like one pitch of the roof, so it's on one side. So that's how you can see here, it looks a little bit modern. And you know, like I've said, I'm working with a historic district. There are a lot of materials you aren't allowed to use. There are a lot of things you aren't allowed to do. So they wanted me to get pretty specific on here. So we even have the types of doors. You can see the grids on the windows here. They're those three by one windows. So you have to make sure you do everything pretty specifically to what they want. And then even this window here, there's a bathroom behind there. They really didn't like this window and I pushed back on it because I live on a pretty heavily trafficked street. Someone is using the bathroom and going to the shower. I, I don't want people looking in. Sure, I could put a blind there, but it just looks better from my perspective if you're in the bathroom and there's no blind and you just have this transom window. So I pushed back on that. And then you can also see kind of from the exterior here that there is a slightly funky bit of layout because we had to keep it under 800 square feet. So they sort of had to chop off the top floor a little bit. That's why it's not one full picture there. This is the existing garage that doesn't really matter. This is starting to look a little bit more complicated. This is probably the design. Let me go to the next page, see if that's there. Yeah, this is the design of what things look like. So it might be hard to imagine this and look and see how things feel. Again, this is where Mia's super helpful. She used a service or some platform or something where she basically built the whole 3D look of this. Uh, we measured it out so we could get a better feel of the space, but essentially we got the bottom floor here, kitchen, kitchen island, dining area down here. Uh, and then in the back, there's this utility closet, which doesn't count as space. And that's just for storage and all that stuff. Of course, we wanna have washer dryer inside and it's a pretty nice looking kitchen in my experience. We tried to have a little bit of a closet down here, but there were so many issues that I learned about with that. You have to have enough clearance between the closet door opening and the stairs. So we ended up just completely getting rid of it because if we had it, then on the upstairs, we would have lost living room space. And you know, these pictures make it seem like this is a lot of area, but if you really mapped it out, it isn't as much as you think. It's still a decent size, but it looks way bigger on paper than if you actually just mapped it out in person. But overall, it started to look really well. Kitchen, I'm really excited about. It's gonna be a nice open area, nine foot ceilings. And then you go up to the stairs. This will be a little desk area over here. Living room, pretty sizable bathroom, double vanity. That was an awesome thing to add. Big shower. 
And then also one thing we really wanted to be able to add was a king bed in the bedroom. So talking about furniture here because this either is going to be a short-term rental or a mid-term rental. So that's going to be something that I think really helps stand out if you can have a king bed, double vanity, nice kitchen space, uh, desk space for people to work at too. We're in a really awesome location in Durham. So it's just gonna be a good spot for people who wanna stay here either short-term or mid-term. This next drawing are you know just a bunch of red lines. This is a good example of going back and forth. So that last picture, it took a really long time to get there. We gave them our suggestions. The designer came back, said this is what it looks like. We nitpicked every little thing, thought about it in our head, what would be a good experience, user experience, whatever you wanna call it, and then went back and forth probably about seven or eight times with red lines like this, say what we did or didn't want. And you can see me and I are both pretty particular with the amount of red lines that we have on here. Uh, so we wanted to make sure that it was good, what we wanted and what we would have liked, especially because it's gonna be a new space. So you don't wanna just kinda go into it blindly, half-heartedly, really think about it and how you want the space to be. So where all the lights are gonna be. And of course, I don't know everything and it's hard to think about all of this when it's just on paper. So you do have these people who are helping you build the project that actually do know a lot and can give you good suggestions. But this is kind of where you go back and forth. You make a suggestion, they tell you why you can't do it or give you a better suggestion. And that's really the whole process. And right now, today, when I'm filming this, it's October 19th. I had this idea to do the ADU a while ago, but to actually move it forward, probably about April of this year, we started submitting ideas for plans to construction company, probably early summer, and then I was able to actually submit to the historic district in the beginning of September, and this is a two month process. Once they accept, then I could submit it to the city for a permit. So I'm hoping that we could actually start construction, let's call it January or February. And now the rest of this doesn't really matter. It's stuff that is more important to engineers, not really things that I'm caring about, the roof pitch, uh, all that good stuff, and how we can make sure that this building doesn't fall down. So it's important for that aspect, but not important for a design aspect or what we're talking about here on this video. So the more important parts, where we are with this project and when will it actually happen, and it's starting to get more and more expensive. Originally, I thought this was gonna be about a $120,000, $130,000 project because I thought I could get it in about 600, 650 square feet. And in my head, I'm thinking that's sizable enough for a one bed, one bath, because I lived in a one bed, one bath with Mia that was about 600 square feet. So I'm thinking that's pretty good. That's enough square footage. And the bigger the property that you build, the more square footage. But in order to have a functional space, we had to put more stuff in. And each more square foot is more money. Things also somehow, and we all know how because of inflation, have gotten more expensive. So this is starting to seem more like a $180,000 project because also that 120, 130 that I was really more of an estimate, I wouldn't say quoted, was based on just very basic, not very good finishes that I probably wouldn't put in a property because they wouldn't last very long. So things are getting more expensive. Maybe it could even knock its way up to 200 grand, which is a lot of money. The one silver lining here is that it's gonna be about $230, $240 a square foot, maybe a little bit less to build this. And things sell in my neighborhood for almost $400 a square foot. So the stuff that I build here will be worth quite a lot of money. So at least that makes me not feel as bad, but it is a lot of money in order to put forward to build something. And just going along timeline here, mid-September, I submitted all these plans that you see here to the historic district. They're currently in comments with me right now, and it's honestly getting quite frustrating because the person who is appointed to the case has asked me the same questions a number of times. I'm trying to be quite kind about it and not angry because they could kill the project if they really wanted. So they hold a lot of power for something that I think is irrelevant, but whatever. Uh, hopefully she doesn't watch this YouTube video. And then once it's approved and gone through that two month process of them looking it over and we get to a common design or understanding and I have everything that I need, all my ducks in a row, then I do a presentation in front of that whole historic committee about the project and why I wanna do it. I think the funniest thing so far is all the things that I'm not allowed to do. And then you walk out of my house and you see all these homes have all these things that you're not allowed to do. So, you know, kind of dumb in my opinion, whatever. So once that happens, I have my presentation, I get what's called my certificate of appropriateness. And then also I can give, you know, the plans with my certificate of appropriateness to the city. The city approved my plans and then I can finally start building. So I'm hoping that I can start building early next year and then have it ready for sometime in the summer. 
That way I could potentially hit Duke University's graduation weekend or move-in weekend. Those would be expensive short-term rental weekends and then maybe after that, I can get in that midterm rental tenant that will hopefully bring in some good money. So that's where you have it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. And if you wanna learn more about real estate investing or the real estate agent business, or you wanna work with me in the state of North Carolina or looking for a referral anywhere, I know a lot of agents all around the US and can help you find someone, can help you invest or buy a property, whatever you are looking to do. So again, if you did like it, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you scroll down and make that thumbs up button blue if you haven't already done so. And don't forget to tap the notification bell if you want to get notified when I make new videos. So thanks again for watching and more wealth is coming your way.